I think I've said before that the abortion, a lot of people think this, uh, the abortion issue is a, is a real vote winner for Democrats. Mm -hmm. They've been really good at harnessing that uh, anger and backlash ever since the Dobbs decision came out a couple of years ago. I think it helped them in the midterms. Um, I think it's probably the last thing that Donald Trump wanted. I think Arizona is going to be a massive, massive state uh, come November. We've already, we already know that there's the third party factor there that could um, upset the apple cart. I think the Republicans need as many votes as possible. And the last thing that they want to do is galvanize Democrats in that state. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with managing editor Chris Irvine. Hey. Chris, we are finally having the first of four criminal trials starting on Monday after many attempts from the Trump team to delay this. There's been a lot of speculation about whether this will hurt Trump, will it help him if he gets convicted, which he's widely expected to in Manhattan. What yeah. do you think this is going to do for him? Uh, I, how many times have we had this conversation? A lot, probably. The, uh, oh, this is really going to hurt Trump and it's really mm -hmm. going to damage him and then it doesn't do anything for it. Mm -hmm. I think of all the trials, this one might be the one where... Uh, it has the kind of least ultimate uh, impact to his reputation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would, would probably think, okay, yeah, he paid, he paid much money, yeah. <laughs> big deal. Um, <laughs> we <knew that>. So <laughs> I, I feel like, um, I've always felt that the ones that the, that's the most potentially damaging to him was the classified documents mm -hmm. case, uh, but that's been kind of dragged through delay after delay, as you well know mm -hmm. uh, so much. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, again, it will just go down to his supporters will say, well, it's, this is a witch hunt and it's been concocted by the Department of Justice and Bragg who are out to get him. And the people that don't support him will say, well, he's a crook. So mm -hmm. and nothing will change. So do you think that it's smart strategic wise for Donald Trump to talk about this on the campaign trail, to, to focus on it because a lot of people do perceive it as so unfair? Or do you think the less time he spends dwelling on this, the better for him? I mean, it's tough to say. I feel like, I don't see why it really does him any favors. Mm -hmm. I think there is, uh, he does have the message of course that they're out to get him and this is all a DOJ ploy and it's the Biden administration kind of, uh, election interference however that he wants to frame it but I, I don't know I don't know what, if it is necessarily going to attract new voters and I feel like that's kind of Trump's Achilles heel ultimately like he's always going to have that Republican MAGA base that's baked in uh, but I'm not I'm, I'm curious that I don't feel like that that messaging is the type of thing that's going to get other people who maybe voted for Biden last time or who sat the last one out on board. But I, I don't know, I might, I might be mistaken there. Trump is in some ways getting roped into the House drama. The sure. House Republicans have a frankly ungovernable majority in the <laughs> House right now. And is there peril for Donald Trump allowing himself to get too closely associated with that drama and perhaps blamed for some of the dysfunction? Yes and no. I think it was interesting that we have a story up on the site uh, today, uh, as in Thursday, um, that, uh, that he's the Trump camp is pretty annoyed with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mm -hmm. uh, and they believe that this kind of theater and uh, drama that's uh, afflicting the House Republicans doesn't reflect well on them and he called it a bunch of BS um, although they didn't use the uh, shorter term for it mm -hmm. um, I think there is a situation potentially where it could hurt him but I also think he's done a pretty good job at keeping the House Republicans at arm's length uh, and he will dictate what they do uh, and he has a friendly cordial house speaker now who seems to kind of dance to his tune a bit but he's trump's always been quite deft at uh keeping the criticism um at arm's length and i think the house republicans make such a kind of mess themselves that trump probably can say hey look it's this ain't got anything to do with me get your own house in order here and uh well, i think it will ultimately remain to be seen how it will affect november but They've certainly got a horrible track record so far. And um, I saw a tweet the other day, I forget who wrote it, but it was like, the house is going to house. And <laughs> it just felt like it summed up like, oh, here we go again. They've been out mm -hmm. for two weeks. Here we are again. There's just no end in sight, no end in sight. And they just can't get themselves together. It's pretty depressing. And finally, another sort of 
potential problem on the horizon for Donald Trump is the fact that coinciding with Donald Trump's announcement that he believes abortion should be a state issue, which is a pretty middle of the road position for a Republican, uh, the Arizona Supreme Court made a ruling on a near total ban in that crucial swing state. Absolutely. Do you think that's going to be a problem for Donald Trump? I genuinely think it could be. Uh, I think I've said before that the abortion, a lot of people think this, uh, the abortion issue is a, is a real vote winner for Democrats. Mm -hmm. They've been really good at harnessing that uh, anger and backlash ever since the Dobbs decision came out a couple years ago. I think it helped them in the midterms. Um, I think it's probably the last thing that Donald Trump wanted. I think Arizona is going to be a massive, massive state uh, come November. We've already, we already know that there's the third party factor there that could um, upset the apple cart. I think the Republicans need as many votes as possible and the last thing that they wanna do is galvanize Democrats in that state that, well, we remember all the drama that happened in 2020 mm -hmm. with uh, the Fox News decision desk and- oh, Who um, can forget, that's right. Right, exactly. So the, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think he's gonna be pretty annoyed about that. I believe he's already said it was a step too far. I, I'm not sure if I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> misquoting he, him he there. He criticized but. DeSantis for the sixth, for the Harpy bill in Florida, so yeah. that would make sense. I, I, I will say that I was in, there's an interesting point that Trump does seem to be uh, trying to kind of harness some more centrist views. Mm -hmm. And I think he is pretty centrist when it comes to abortion. Uh, and he has proven repeatedly time and time again that he doesn't want to get dragged into the mud on that one. And I think mm -hmm. he knows it's the Republicans' biggest weakness. Well, we, we will see if that works out for him. Chris, thank you so much for being here today. You can get more writing from Chris and the rest of the political team at WashingtonExaminer.com.